Uh, good to have uh, John Toogood from She Had back with Noise11.com. The 10th album, I, you know, I almost need to have sort of a, a happy birthday jingle or a celebrate, you know, like a horns going, you know, birthday candles. What, what are we doing to celebrate number 10, John? Oh, uh, the fact I'm just celebrating the fact that we've made a like an extremely powerful rock record at, at, and I've just turned 50. It's just so bizarre. You know, it's like, um, that's the biggest gap between She Hard Records since we started at 18. It's like seven years. So um, there was a period there where after Five Eyes where my wife and I had two children. And for the first time since I was 18 years old, I was like, I don't care if I write a song again in my life because these kids would come along and just totally turn my world upside down. And, and um, but in the background, we were still, She Hard was still getting together every sort of six months and just like writing for two weeks, a two week period. And I storing up all this music on the side going it sounds great I still don't have anything to say but because I'm so exhausted from being a, a, a dad and um, uh, but then in the background I mean just I was sort of like a, a lot of my friends you know horrified at what was sort of going on globally and politically just watching Bolsonaro ar arrive in, in Brazil and then watching Trump you know Obama you know you know hand over the reins to Donald Trump, which was like going from, you know, day to night and then and, and then watching Brexit happening because I'm my, my parents are both Londoners. So I'm that's where a lot of my family is. And I know a lot of them were quite disheartened by the result of that um, referendum and uh, especially the younger ones. Just watching the sort of rise of the, the sort of populist sort of strong man again, which was you know, I know, I know they're not Mussolini's or Hitler's, but they did. They were, there's definitely a an echo of a of a of a of a sort of an older time where we sort of made a big mess as as a species, and then had to stand around afterwards and went, and went well, let's not do that again. And it was like, well, here we are again. And um, uh, just a little bit about me. My wife is Sudanese. Um, I I didn't plan on you know my best mate being a Sudanese national. And I didn't, uh, but that's what happened. And then we had two kids, they're both biracial. So when I'm watching, you know, Donald Trump at a, at a press conference sort of legitimizing a whole bunch of, you know, people carrying ticky torches and saying, the Jews will not replace us in a modern American city, I'm sort of starting to worry about the future that, you know, my children are gonna come into. On top of all that, Australia was on fire for what, how many months before the pandemic hit? And, and I've lived in Melbourne for 22 years. It's been hot, yeah, for sure, in the summers before, but that was pretty weird. And and just, it was like, all oh, right, we've got to deal with something here. Um, it's not going away. And then just as people were having that conversation, the pandemic hit and everything's locked down. So at that lockdown period, I looked back at the music that I had that she had compiled and went, I've, I've got to hear some rock music that makes me feel like I'm not going insane watching this world fall into this insanity. Um, and so I borrowed uh, Cam from Body Jar's uh, uh, a skateboard store, which luckily for me was in the five kilometer radius from my house. And after I'd put the kids to bed at night, uh, I'd say bye to my wife and I would take that music and just scream. <laughs> over the top of this extremely heavy music and just got all those thoughts from four years of Trump and, and you know, and just all this madness that was, that was sort of happening. And also the, the rise of the, of the, you know, the sort of opinion piece. I mean, that, that's that for me, like that sort of is one of the biggest problems we're facing is like the sort of legitimization of like, of these opinion pieces sort of that are posing as news uh, that seem to be reaching people that are sort of disaffected and, and poisoning their minds with fear and, and distrust of other human beings. And it's like, I think the reason why, I mean, the biggest reason why the She Hard record is so heavy is because we actually really like humans and we actually want to see the world a better place. So when you see the rise of someone saying is narcissistic, or as selfish, um, propagating that, to, you know, as, as Donald Trump being the leader of the free world, um, well, not so much anymore, but, um, but when you're seeing that sort of idea of, well, let's assume the worst of humans, so, and get in there first and grab it first before 
they get a chance to screw me over. That's not the way I look at the world. That's not the way any of the boys in Shihar look at the world. We sort of try and assume the best in people. And so this is my musical response to that sort of worldview sort of coming to prevalence. I don't want to live in that world. Uh, and I mean, I know it's only rock and roll, but that's my art form. That's where I get to exercise my demons. That's where I get to propose a different way of living or at least uh, provide a critique to some of that stuff which seems to be taking off, you know. And so, well, it's, it's, it's interesting, yeah. isn't it? Because you're talking about being able to be a political commentator through music. And that was once a thing in the late 60s with mm -hmm. Vietnam, uh, with Crosby, Stills and Nash, with Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uh, she had, and yourself, like through your lyrics, come out with an extremely powerful uh, commentary on what's going on in the world today. But you're quite alone in doing that. There's not a lot of political comments coming out of the music industry. It's all bloody Cardi B and uh all, all that sort of rubbish well i think you know i mean they sort of uh, it, it's sort of morphed from the actual art itself into to the political you know like so someone like taylor swift for instance i think politically she's probably quite a similar outlook in a lot of ways to where she had a sitting but she does her talking on on the social media platform you know support of like you know um gay and you know, lesbian rights and, um, um, you know, just, you know, working to try and unseat Republicans, you know, you know, quite conservative Republicans in her home state. I mean, she's, but, but it's not in her music so much, you know, it's like, whereas for us, I, I don't, I never comment on social media because I personally don't think um, that's the place to win an argument. And it's not the place to, it's just not made for a, a back and forth that's made to entrench your views. That's your side. I'm going to hang with my tribe. I'm going to hang with my tribe. And I just think with, for me, so getting back to the music, that's, that's the place I get to finally say, this is actually what I think, you know, I just think it's the, it's, it's the best avenue I've got to, to, to just have that cathartic experience of just going, okay, I think the world's insane currently, and this is why I think it's insane, you know? And I think that the answers to the existential threats of, say, climate change or income inequality, racial inequality, gender inequality, all these things that we need to face, we need to face them together, not in separate camps, you know, because that's when we're going to solve these problems, you know? So, so, yeah, so I just use my art, you know? You're right. But there are there are bands. There's things like Sleaford Mods, you know, like you know, not from Nottingham, England. It's like a working class poet. He's telling people through his music about talking about the ridiculous divide between rich and poor. That's really cool. I think Idols, from a guitar band's perspective, they've got some pretty cool things that they're saying in their music. And a lot of the, you know, a lot of people like, you know, in America, I'd say it's up to the hip hop, you know, people like Kendrick Lamar. Who are actually doing social commentary and a lot of the rock and roll stuff hasn't really been doing that for a while we haven't had a rage against the machine for a while haven't had a fugazi you know and it's like these are bands that are really that i listen to when i'm when i sort of lose my faith in music i'll, I'll head back to you know fugazi or rage to go remind me oh that's why i love hard music because it can go boom and cut to the chase you know so we reference those bands when we when we write music, you know. <laughs> All right, very quickly, uh, Old Gods, produced by Adam Spark from Birds of Tokyo, um, uh, and the album recorded obviously with uh, all the guys. Did you were you able to do that through the cracks of the lockdown? We did. We managed to get Carl into Australia, and then we managed to make it across the border the day before it locked down into New South Wales. Got in a car, went up to Gosford, and just worked it. Um, yeah, and then got to work with Adam Spark. I mean, honestly, that guy, from a, from a producer perspective, I reckon he's knocked it out of the park. It's my favourite sounding she had record in a 33-year career. It's like he managed to make it sound bigger than any record that we've ever made, and we didn't have to go overseas to do it. We got a, a guy that happened to have seen us when he was younger. He's 10 years younger than me. He saw us at the big day out, I think, in Perth, when he was a young dude, and went, 
I've still never heard a she hard record that gave me that feeling that I did standing in front of the speakers watching you guys that big day out. So let's try and make that happen with this record. And I honestly think he did it. He is such a talented dude. It's insane, you know. Yeah. All right. And uh, also the other thing I'll mention before we go, uh, 1993 was the Churn album. So you're just two, way, two years away from the 30th anniversary. I know. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? You must talk about that over the next 20 years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do. Hey, lovely to see you, Paul. Good to, good to talk to you, Old Gods, the uh, new album from She Had. Stay safe, mate. Bye-bye.